Today we're going to tell you guys uh, an urban legend that most of these guys know very well, um, La Llorona. So our unit is on urban legends and we bring in both cultures, uh, urban legends from the USA like Bigfoot and then urban legends from their home countries like La Llorona. La Llorona is found in rivers or forests in Mexico at night. This legend started in 15 This unit is all about skills, summaries, academic vocabulary, writing, and retelling. La Llorona drowned her kids because she was scared her father was going to take them away and be raised by his new wife. So that's the kind of the why. So that's the story behind La Llorona, in case you haven't heard that. Um, and then um, this is a representation of as part of special effects class, we do a variety of types of makeups, and one of the methods we use is airbrush. So Destiny is willing to to paint a airbrush makeup on our La Llorona model if she's willing. Yeah. Awesome. This stuff is also great because it's very special makeup. It's a hybrid makeup, and what that means is that it's part water, tiny part water, but mostly alcohol based which means it dries incredibly fast and it sticks really well. Uh, I did a airbrush paint makeup look on a model. What sort of techniques do you use when you're using airbrush like that? Always keep in motion, don't puddle up, and make sure you clean the face before. One thing we did to prepare for this was to watch a YouTube tutorial. I pointed out academic vocabulary that I thought that these students would need to know. Stippling. Who remembers yeah. what stippling is? Lightly touching. Like tapping in a circle? Okay, what was another one? Indent. Indent. What does it mean if you make an indent? You put something into it. Yeah. Anybody else? What about when we talk about how it feels? What do we call that? Texture. 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 So on our screens, and someone just turned off, but on our screens we have some examples of different types of lacerations. We know that as cuts, but the metal term would be laceration. So we have two parts. You see at the top I've labeled it A and B. These cannot mix together until I am ready. So what I'm going to do to make sure I don't accidentally do another mistake, or make another mistake, is I'm going to label these sticks A and B because I don't need to mix up my sticks either. So I have a graduated container to make sure that I'm going to use the proper amount. I'm going to take my stick and make sure it's thoroughly mixed because it does settle. And Mike has got his mask on right now. It's not painted, but that mask was sculpted in clay, molded in plaster, and then we ran it in latex. And the latex, when it dries, it turns into a nice, flexible, but depending on how thick you make it, it can be fairly rigid material. And then Jacob, on the head form over there, is his sculpture of or a mask version of his Vecna sculpture. So if you're a fan of Stranger Things, you may recognize that character. And if you make a sculpture to make a mask, um, so that Micah and Jacob can answer this for sure, how long does it usually take to make a mold of your mask? Uh, it's like for an entire school day. Yeah. So they have to ask permission from their teachers well in advance to make sure that we're not going to mess things up, you have one chance. So I've got my part A. I'm gonna go ahead and add my silicone pigment because if we make this translucent, what's translucent mean? Clear. Clear, yeah, I can see through it. So you can see it's kind of cloudy, but we can still, light's passing through. But I'm gonna add some pigment to this. And this is made specifically for silicone. And I'm gonna add my part B. Now I went slightly above my measurement, so I'm gonna to have to make sure that I go slightly above the next line. Too. It's very viscous. You might know what viscous means. Well, something that's viscous can be sticky, that's true. Look at it when it pours out and see if you can see what viscous means. Thick. Thick. Yes. Just like all the seeds. So we've got us a nice fleshy tone. And if it doesn't match you perfectly, do not stress. It's okay because we're going to use some alcohol palettes, some paints to color correct to make it match your skin. Time is ticking. Grab a cup and go back to the, a table. Choose yeah. a table. No more than like two or three at a table. Yeah. Make sure you spread out. Yes. Go for it. So what we did today um, was a, a wound makeup, uh, which varied from lacerations to burns. We used an AB silicone mixture and alcohol, alcohol palettes.
don't try to smooth out the middle. You just want to uh, smooth out the sides of it. Smooth. Is it shiny or matte? Shiny. The skin on your forearm. Is the skin on your forearm shiny or matte? Uh, like your skin, not the silicone. Matte. Matte. Yeah. So we have a discrepancy there. conversation before as Mason's kids came in about how sure we do things all the time ourselves but a true testament to how well you understand something is can you pass that down to someone else with a little bit of red and just hit skin tones I'd always start off lighter than what I would normally do and then you can always work your way darker it's a challenge because everybody's skin tone is a little bit different. You need to look at your skin, in particular the area where you did your wound, and think about what skin color is this. And I don't mean tan, brown, I mean what is the base tone. So look at your skin tone, see if you see any yellow or orange or red or green or even blue, depending on where you did the makeup. So examine that. If you can't tell, talk to our effects artists. Maybe they can help you or I can help you. We do a lot of different kind of makeups. We do a lot of different techniques in the class. The work varies from mask making to sculpting to prop making to like five minute makeups like we just did. Showing that you can teach something shows that you have a better understanding of it. You have a thorough understanding of it. That you can show that understanding. You can show that knowledge to other people. Awesome, that looks gnarly. That is gnarly, man. <laughs> so that's gnarly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep doing special effects after high school? Or you have any plans like that? Yes, I plan on having my own business where I make and sell um, clay and latex mask and do different prosthetics. What was the coolest part of the whole makeup experience? I would probably say the airbrush that when um, they put the uh, white in my face. We also did a KWL with that so I could get a grasp of what they already knew, what they want to know, and what then finally what they learned. Um, and with that W, we were able to bring in the questions at the end and Mr. Screws was able to answer a lot of their questions that they were still wanting to know. So what were those questions you still had? I said Mr. Screws or the class may be able to answer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how do you make the, the silicone? I, I know that's how I'm like, like, well, I have to order that. I don't physically make that myself. It's a good question because it's a chemical compound, so you can make chemical compounds. It's a great question. I love that you asked that. Yeah. Um, I have had someone ask me, like, could we buy the raw chemicals and make it ourselves? And the answer is probably yeah, we could. For the green screen, why is it green and not like purple, red, or blue? Yeah, yeah. So the actual reason as to why it's green, I don't have a real answer. It is a good color that's easy to identify in camera and then pull out. Because, I mean, that's what a green screen does, right? It's like, so you can capture that color and then pull it out. How long does it usually take to make, like, a really big... Yeah, so, it, like you said, a really big one, so it depends. So, so this would not be considered a big makeup. It's a full face, but it's just the makeup and no prosthetics. So no thing added and glued. So if it's something that's a full face, full head, I mean, you're talking at least four hours where you're going to be gluing everything down, doing the makeup. Because there's a lot of sculpture elements that you have to build, like you guys did today. But that would be pre-sculpted, pre-made, glued down. Yeah, I'm talking like four hours. Ooh, that looks real. That's scary. <laughs> What did you think about the class? It was awesome. It was great. The people were being so nice and so like understandable. Yeah. So yeah, I had fun. What do you think about classes like this where it's not just the teacher teaching, but like students are teaching? Oh, that's I like it because you get to know like their experience. They were telling me how they did, we did so much better than them on their first time, and I like it because you know some teachers students so, like you feel more connected.